Hi there. Okay, so we've made it to key area 8 of unit 2. This is the last key area of unit 2 and it is about blood glucose and obesity. Now if we have a look at the National 5 stuff that you're supposed to know, first of all blood glucose is regulated by the pancreas and the liver working together. Okay, Insulin is released from the pancreas and it causes a conversion of blood glucose to glycogen in the liver and then glucagon released from the pancreas causes the conversion of glycogen in the liver to glucose. Now, important language point I'm going to stress now and throughout the video is we do not say that insulin turns glucose to glycogen and we do not say that glucagon turns glycogen to glucose. The reason why we do not say this is it's because cells in the liver do that based on the instruction that comes to them, either the instruction from insulin or the instruction from glucagon. So let's see what we're going to build on for a higher human. So uh, blood glucose, we require a certain amount of glucose in our blood in order to provide fuel for cell respiration. Okay, So the idea is glucose is broken down to pyruvate, the chain of reactions happens, you get a bunch of ATP produced and that's used for energy requiring stuff. Okay, Now that number you need to know there, normal blood glucose is 5 millimoles per litre, so it's underlined because you need to know it. Okay. Uh, chronically high blood glucose of let's say around 16 millimoles per litre is an indication of diabetes. So if your blood glucose is getting tested and it stays high and remains or it gets high and stays high, that is an indication of diabetes. And that's something that doctors or uh, practitioners would look out for in order to diagnose diabetes is does glucose go high and stay high? Now, High blood glucose is a problem, and this is where we're getting into this. Very high blood glucose causes vascular damage. So glucose diffuses from blood vessels into endothelial cells that line arteries and veins. Now, if this blood glucose is really, really high, it can damage the endothelial cells, leading to damage of whichever blood vessel it's in. Now, if that blood vessel is in the heart uh, or the... Um, or the vessels around the brain, that's leading to cardiovascular disease. If that's in the arms and legs or other organs around the area, that's peripheral vascular disease. If that's the arteries in the eye, that's going to lead to blindness. If that's arteries in the kidneys, that leads to renal damage. Um, and then we also get peripheral nerve damage. So the idea is it can also, high blood glucose can damage the nerves in your body, particularly the sensory nerves that tell you you're in pain or you're touching something. Now, cells in the pancreas are going to monitor the blood glucose concentration. Now, that's a common exam question that comes up is where is blood glucose monitored? And we're saying in the pancreas. OK, the pancreas produces two hormones that work antagonistically. Now, antagonism um, might be a new concept for some of you, especially if you've not done P, maybe national five or, or higher P. This will be a new concept to you. Things that work antagonistically, they work opposite from each other. So one does one job and the second one does the opposite job. Uh, we often talk about muscle pairs working antagonistically. So we can take a bicep, for example, a bicep pulls the arm up this way. Tricep works antagonistically and it pulls the arm down this way. OK, so that's what antagonistically means. Uh, the two hormones that work antagonistically are insulin and glucagon. This is not new. That's National 5. OK, now we're going to introduce a new role to insulin. There is something new that's on this slide compared to National 5. It's a tiny thing. It's a really tiny thing. OK, so when cells in the pancreas detect an increase in blood glucose, so say after a meal, OK, the pancreas produces insulin to deal with that high blood glucose. OK, now before in National 5, you learned one of these jobs. Now we're learning the second job for insulin. OK, so insulin has two jobs. Number one to allow all cells to absorb glucose. Now the GIF that's currently playing next to me, that is showing insulin doing its job. So insulin binds to the receptors and then the glucose channels open up to allow glucose inside. Now you don't need to know it at that kind of level, but this GIF is showing you exactly why insulin is needed. The second job, you already know, it makes liver cells store glucose as glycogen. So when it binds to liver cell receptors, those liver cells are then triggered to take in glucose and store it as glycogen. Now, the removal of glucose from the bloodstream into cells and into the liver, that causes your blood glucose levels to go down because it's being stored elsewhere. Glucagon, same job as before. OK, so it's the same as National 5. So when the cells in the pancreas detect a drop in blood glucose, the pancreas will release glucagon. Glucagon has exactly one job, activate conversion of glycogen in the liver to glucose. 
So it's going to break down that glycogen back into the units of glucose, still just dealing with a carbohydrate here. And this causes blood glucose levels to rise again because the glucose is produced and then released into the bloodstream. Now, this diagram summarizes all of that in a horrifically scary way. Uh, but essentially what you can do is either track the changes occurring through high blood sugar or low blood sugar. So high blood sugar promotes insulin release inside the pancreas. The pancreas releases the insulin. Insulin does its two jobs. Number one, goes to the liver. Number two, goes to the cells and allows cells to absorb the glucose, which is your new function. If it's low blood glucose, we're following the blue arrows, so that promotes glucagon release in the pancreas. The pancreas releases glucagon, and then the liver will convert glycogen back to glucose. Now, this is something extra that's not from National 5. During strenuous exercise, or if the body's in fight or flight mode, more on that later in Unit 3, okay, adrenaline is released from the adrenal glands. Okay, Now, this hormone is designed to get the body ready for oxygen, for for action, uh, and this means you need oxygen and you need energy. Okay, now adrenaline causes a large secretion of glucagon from the pancreas and inhibition of insulin, the stuff in the box you need to know. Now, this is why uh, diabetics have to be careful if they are exercising because that large secretion of glucagon and that release of um, basically a high amount of blood glucose back into the blood can cause issues for diabetics. So, um, what they have a tendency to do if they are athletes, they have a tendency to test their blood glucose a lot during this. And I'm getting very distracted by the dog following on its face. OK, so again, adrenaline increases the, re the release of glucagon, increasing blood glucose and also inhibits insulin. So to summary, uh, if we're looking for the features and where it's made. So the feature looking at where it's made, first of all, the insulin and glucagon both made in the pancreas. OK. When they are made, insulin's made when it's high blood glucose, glucagon is made when it's low blood glucose. Where it acts, well, insulin acts on both the liver and all body cells. Glucagon only binds to the liver. And what it does, insulin converts glucose to glycogen inside liver cells. Okay, that's what we're dealing with here. And also allows the cells to absorb glucose. And glucagon does the opposite, converts glycogen to glucose. So that's a summary of blood glucose. The next video is on what happens when that goes wrong in diabetes. See you then.